And we're going up north to Columbus, which means on this show, to my left, on the screen or right, depending on which way you think about it, Jay Stevens, locked on Ohio State Buckeyes. I'll share my quick reaction first, then we'll dive into this. Chip Kelly and Ryan Day have ties together going back to their time at New Hampshire, which is where Chip Kelly was prior to his arrival to Oregon. Chip Kelly was either the head coach of the OC, I think, at New Hampshire, running this weird thing called the spread offense and no huddle and fast tempo, revolutionary concepts at the time. He goes to Oregon, but when he was at New Hampshire, Ryan Day was his quarterback. So you have now gone from you know mentor to mentee for both of these guys. And that's that's got to be a strange role to kind of flip there. But why I think this is perfect, Jay, you've got two guys who know each other well, who philosophically see the game the same way. Chip Kelly's pedigree is well established at this point. He's got a veteran quarterback with Will Howard. I think that when Bill O'Brien announced he's going to Boston College, this is the best Ohio State could have done with their offensive coordinator move. Keeps them squarely as one of the favorites in the Big Ten and to win the national championship. I'm right there with you, man. It's one of those things that I said to you previously, and I really don't think I shared it with anybody else. I kind of was thinking this should have happened a few weeks ago. You mentioned that tie there, but I also believe that Day and Chip Kelly coached together when Day became a coach. So you had coach and quarterback, then coach and coach, and I'll coach and coach once again, but for the first time, Ryan Day's the boss, not Chip Kelly. So I'm curious how that dynamic is going to go. But Spencer, I've been saying this when it comes to Ohio State's offensive coordinator position. There's two things you want to look for in a coach that you come in and you bring in for this spot. One, previous head coaching experience. Two, a guy who has who is a well-established play caller in NFL or college football. Bill O'Brien was that. Chip Kelly is that. So you had two guys, two candidates that fit that description. But I think the fam, not maybe family ties. I don't know how close their families are, but the friendship and former coach relationship that Ryan Day and Bill and excuse me, Ryan Day and Chip Kelly had goes into why this is a higher right now. You guys will hear me stumble and say Bill O'Brien or Chip Kelly on accident because three weeks ago Ohio State hired Bill O'Brien to be their OC and QB coach. He is not going to Boston. And I do think this is more of a family move. Yes, a financial upgrade as well. But I do think this is more of a family move as there's a his son, really bad medical condition, has been getting treatment up there. And his family hadn't moved to Columbus just yet. They were still up in Boston. So it does make a lot of family ties there with that, with that decision. But it makes a whole lot of sense. And Ryan Day can do what he wants to do, not call plays, have somebody else who he trusts handle the Buckeyes offense. Yeah, I, I think that that component of it works beautifully because that was part of the discussion this offseason is Ryan Day's not calling plays anymore. There are too many other responsibilities to be a college football head coach, and it works for Chip Kelly because he can be at his best. You know what Chip Kelly despises? He doesn't like recruiting a whole heck of a lot. Well, they've got Ryan Day and Brian Hartline especially to, to handle that aspect of it, and he likes just football. And Chip Kelly can just show up call plays and just coach football and he hasn't been an offensive coordinator in a long long time not since his days at Oregon I mean 2008 would have been the last season that he was an offensive coordinator not a head coach but he's been the play caller at UCLA the last several years now this past season is where I, I think some people might look at Chip Kelly and say is this really still a great hire is this 10 years too late because of what UCLA's offense was this past year they ended the season eight and five they did an L.A. Bowl victory over the Mountain West champions in Boise State. But UCLA's problem this year was that they did not have a stable, high-ceiling quarterback situation. They were in a transition year. And so for anyone that doubts Chip Kelly and says, this isn't the right time, he's not the same guy that he was, not exactly the same guy, no. However, I encourage you to look at what he did with Dorian Thompson Robinson at UCLA in the modern era, not what happened this past year when he was stuck between a high floor, low ceiling, inexperienced veteran quarterback in Ethan Garbers, a mostly running quarterback transfer from Kent State in Colin Schley, and a highly recruited freshman in Dante Moore, who ended up going back to Oregon where he'd once verbally committed. Anyway, I think that Chip Kelly is still 
a really, really good offensive mind. He doesn't like to mess with NIL. He doesn't like to mess with donors. He doesn't like to recruit. He doesn't like to do any of that sort of stuff. Putting him in this OC role, I think, allows him to be at his best, and that is a great thing for Ohio State. You mentioned Hartline, and I think it lost in all of this shuffle between Bill O'Brien and Chip Kelly. Brian Hartline is still the co-offensive coordinator at Ohio State, so Chip Kelly's coming in to run the entire offense, and his assistant is Brian Hartline, who you mentioned is a really good recruiter. But Ryan Day has well established himself as being somebody who's not afraid to spend the time that is needed on the road, driving around Ohio, or in the airplane to get the recruits that Ohio State needs to have on their roster. So for Chip Kelly to be simply a football guy and not want the other stuff, there are people on Ohio State's current coaching staff that can do those things for him. But as long as – here's my thing. I like Chip Kelly. Really good coach. He's running the Buckeyes offense, not Chip Kelly's offense. So my only maybe hesitation, which it would be that way with Bill O'Brien or – whoever, Jason Candle, Toledo head coach, whoever comes in to be the OC, are you comfortable putting your own stuff aside for Ryan Day's offense? My thought is yes. I don't think he would have taken this job if he thought that he would not. that would not be the case. But only time will tell. We'll see more in season. Spring practice, spring game a little bit, but more in season. What Chip Kelly is going to do with the Buckeyes offense in the fall, it just sucks, Spencer. We got to wait till. August, late August, September, October, to really get the feel about what Chip Kelly will do with Abuka and Quinshawn Judkins, Travion Henderson, and all these other phenomenal athletes that Ohio State has on the roster. But it's a good move. It does help impact Brian Hartline because Chip Kelly could use this to get a different job, another head coaching job, and also help groom Brian Hartline to be the offensive coordinator by himself for Ohio State in the future. Yeah, I think that's a great way to look at it. And, you know, Chip Kelly might only stick around for a couple of seasons. He may want to be a head coach just somewhere else that's not UCLA. And and certainly being the Ohio State offense coordinator is a high profile spot where you can accomplish that if you have a sufficient level of success. I mean, we've seen Luke Fickle, of course, have a great coaching career. He's at Wisconsin now. Ryan Day, obviously, was under Urban Meyer, has taken over and done a seamless job. So, I, I think this is the right move. And you were looking for, you know, a situation if you're Ryan Day in which you don't have to call plays anymore and you want someone who you can trust, who's called plays for a long time, who you know. I, I think this lines up really, really well. And I think that the, the Brian Hart line and just Ohio State factor in general kind of neutralized Chip Kelly's biggest weakness, which is, well, he didn't really love to recruit. That's not what he does. Let everybody else worry about player and talent acquisition. They got a whole staff of people to go out and recruit and make pitches and everything like that. And just let Chip Kelly show up, scheme an offense, call plays. I think that works in a really, really big way. And I think this is the best move Ohio State could have made for their offensive coordinator job. Jay Stevens, Locked On Buckeyes. Thanks so much for stopping by, Jay. Really enjoyed this, man. Got to do it again. Absolutely.